All right, just leaving uh, TSS Red Baron here in Lower Hutt, or Tony, or Alice Town, or somewhere. Uh, just spent the an hour or so with a uh, great guy out here, Andrew. He's uh, he sorted out the uh, mounted the tires on my rims because you know anyone who owns a bike like this and it's spent a lot of time and money restoring it doesn't want some first week apprentice banging around on his beautifully finished fps wheels you know it's just i can't risk it so getting new tires getting new tires on the bike was always something that i needed to deal with and uh, I'd be putting it off until the bike was fully done on the road. I know the tire is about 12 years old. Um, previous owner did a couple of hundred K on them because the bike was rubbish and didn't work. I put, uh, I put two and a half thousand on them and I uh, went through a process to decide which ones to get. And I ended up getting the same ones again. Those are Metzler Laser Techs, 190 on the front, 120, 90 on the rear. Uh, these are the uh, V model on the front, H model on the rear. I couldn't get two H's or two V's. It doesn't really matter. It just is the V. The V tires can handle a slightly higher top speed, like 141 or two or three miles an hour. None of that matters. Um, so I've got those on the bike. Main reason I like the way they look. Uh, they ride well. Nice bikes, good, good vintage sort of look for them. And it's the correct vintage for my bike, which is an 82. The look suits that. Um, a lot of the vintage tires, uh, like the Dunlop TT100s or the uh, Bridgestones. Uh, the Bridgestone, not really so, but particularly the Dunlop, I think. Really looks vintage, good vintage look, but it's the wrong vintage. It's like, you know, 60s to early 70s type of vintage. Uh, and it didn't suit my bike at all. And I couldn't get them anyway, so whatever. So I went with the Metzlers in the end. So I'm very happy with that. And they're a silica tire. That was another factor. Like, they have continued to develop them. One of the draws of the BT-46 Bridgestones is that they have a silica um, mix but after I researched that it turns out only the rear tire has that for whatever reason and um, with the Metzlers it's, it appears to be both I certainly haven't seen any evidence uh, otherwise uh, I don't buy these tires to last long that doesn't matter to me and in fact the Metzlers on it really haven't lasted that well the two and a half thousand I put on them <laughs> I think the front tire has half the tread on it that the uh, new front tire has. The rear tire is better, but still, off you go. And uh, I'm just going to pull into a cafe up here. So we got those mounted. Had a small issue with the valves, the valve stem. Turns out, you know, we're putting it back together and um, putting the cap on, the cap seemed to hit the nut. And it was like, what's going on here? The valve stem seemed very short. And so we, after finishing the job, we went and had a look at a new tube again upstairs. And what the previous, the valve stems were, they are the same length, so there's no difference in length. But, um, there's a nut top and bottom. There's an inside nut as well, as well as a disc, sort of a washer, uh, sort of a dome washer thing that holds the, protects the tube. Um, I'm gonna pull in here somewhere. I wonder if I can get into that spot. Uh, let's see how we do. Oh, yes, good job. Oh. Just trying to straighten up. I love having a small van. So where was I? The um, yeah, it turns out what the uh, the FPS wheels are very thick. 
where the valve pokes through the hole in the rim. They're just very thick, and so not a lot of it sticks out the top. And so what the previous person, whoever done it, had taken off the nut at the bottom. So there was just the valve sticking up through. And that gave a good length. But it's not really correct. It's not really safe either. Um, so because everything was all put together and it is the correct way to do it, we left it as is. And so I, I will either take a little bit off the bottom of the, um, the Michelin caps that we've got which have a seal in them which is really nice they're a proper you know i prefer the old style looking caps just the plastic black thing it's uh the most appropriate but i did get a couple of these little metal ones they're very short they've got a seal um and they're only half the height so those would certainly solve the problem all right i'm gonna go and have a have something tasty at a cafe over here. Okay, bye-bye. GoPro, stop recording. Yes. Very happy you're doing this. Very happy. Yep. Secret room. Oh, nice. Yes, cool. So just to clarify, these tires have a red dot on them, and that's the that's the lightest spot of the tire, isn't that's it? And so you put that where the valve sits. Except for Dunlop, whose dot is the heaviest part, just to be clear. Except for Dunlop, whose dot is the heaviest part. Exactly. There's no guarantee that tire's not going to creep on the footing process. So that's yeah. All right. Me, okay. where the red dot is on the downside. I always like to work with the disc up. Should we go on anyway? Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we've got here. 
So this goes, fits, this is a generic size thing, yes, 130, 100, 110. Yeah. Um, Wheel, 120, so Obviously this is a 120, 90 tire. Michelin HD2, blah, blah, blah. 18 MFR. And you're saying it's a, a not a natural rubber, it's, it's a, a... It's a synthetic. Synthetic. Butyl. Butyl, okay. Which is much more airtight. Better air tightness, which is good. I mean, I check my air pressure all the time. But when it's down, you wonder why is it... Why does it lose a pound? And there you go. You just explain. Oh, Plus your suspension wasn't very good when you the um, the rear had conies, but the rear was nice. The front, the front was stuck, was very stiff. Because um, poorly set suspension will absolutely punish tyres. Right. Because it makes the tyre behave so it was a suspension component. And the rear was more supple than the front. But now with the fork kit, the front is more supple than the rear. This is already set by yeah. the previous arrangement. We haven't moved the wheels, so. It'll be in the ideal position. Yeah. We've all come a point of Oh, there is a point where you have to we have to it. start the oh, I see. Just lift it onto the other prong. So we keep on the tire in the well. So the only time anything really touches the rim is just in that moment where you use that the That first it. one you do have to get it on. Yeah. 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 I bought some of those plastic things so I was going to do it myself after it, but um, they, uh, ultimately... Gosh, they make the job so much harder because they take they? away the bottom meter all the way around. Right. Yeah. But if you're doing it like just with levers yourself, you or would the zip tie better work better? I've seen people do that. Yeah. I've never used that zip tie technique. Yeah. I've, I've seen it. So firstly I'm going to inflate it just with no air, with no valve I should say. Yes. So that the uh, pops out. Pops out. We should get a nice result in the bean in the middle. Oh right, because there's areas where it's not. Yeah. Here's the ah. bottom one gone. Come on. It's just moving. So it looks perfect, but it's not. There's still an area. This, this, this line here should go out here. Alright, yeah. oh, I can see there, it's not hot. Okay. Show that. Nice. There's a line here. There it goes. There and you can it. see. It's proven. Here we, here we go. Yes. And now, uh, this is a trick I was showing years ago. Yeah. You always put the valve cord in against the air fire now, because it will blast it clean. If I put that valve cord in, before it's I'm the new valve for out. Yep. It's the new for. So going against right. that wouldn't mean there's no chance of it having no any dust or anything, yep. any grit. So put it in while it's blowing. Yep. To keep it clean. In my experience, approaching half the what, yeah. what are known as flat tires are actually valve core failures. Right. Versus punctures. I did. I read that actually. Yes. But, uh, the common thing, and you see people who carry them with them, which carry I haven't carry a spare, which I haven't done, but uh, is that? Um, I never have. I think if they're new on new and fitted, as I've just illustrated, they don't fail. Right. Now I'm going to guess you. What would, would be... you say? What would you normally guess? I would. For you, I would be. I would be 32 PSI both ends to start with. 32? Yep. That's very low. Yep, it is. Um, what we're doing is giving the tyre the best chance to have a big... To flex. ...compact patch. Yep. Right. And particularly if you're having what seems like premature wear issues, maybe the inflation means the contact patch is narrow and the tyre is scuffing where it might grip. Look at that. 
course, yeah. of course, that could be due to my writing as yeah. well. <laughs> the, um, the front pressure is very easy to govern because really you want to be as low as you can be until yeah. the point where if you brake heavily, if the bike dives and the handlebars do this, yeah. then what's happening is the tyre's caving in yeah. and you're having two contact patches, not yes. one, yes. so that's not enough. So if at 32 and the most extreme braking you ever ride at, yeah. you get that tram tracking feeling, give it a couple of pounds. Is the pressure more about the braking in um, that case? Because otherwise the tyres don't really do anything. No, um, they don't really I mean, flex. In, in the corner, and, as you corner it, the contact patch certainly, the, the tyre certainly collapses and makes a long contact patch and then relaxes again. Does it? And Is that the yeah, idea? Absolutely. You're, yeah. you're meant to, it's meant to flex yeah. in the yeah. corner. If we look at pictures of racing motorcycles yeah. leaning over, yeah. the contact patch is always, the tyre comes down, does that, and then disappears. And that's right. That's, the more rubber on the road, the more grip the more longevity. And the idea is you actually got to get your pressure right to let it flex yep. to a point where it's giving you a maximum patch without affecting yes, handling or stability or anything. So if the, if the front's too low, it'll shake its handlebars under brakes. If the back's too low, you'll get this going around corners. Right. So at the lowest pressure you can without having this, I this, see. you got because I see a lot of the pressures are quite high, yeah. and even on the rims, even on the... So they have a maximum pressure? Yes. And that's referring to what I've just done blowing the tyre up to be. Yes. It's not really necessary to operate pressure. When you go to Metzler's site or somewhere and you look yeah. at the There'll pressures, be maximum, it's yeah. quite high. Um, the tyre manufacturer will always recommend a high, as will the bike manufacturer, because they want the bike to be as... Um, difficult to fault for stability as possible. Uh, you know, n no machine sells well if the first journalist that rides it says it did this in the back yeah, yeah, yeah. or this under brakes. So yeah. they'll always have them tight for um, new release to make sure. Okay, I was on 34 and 38. Right. Um, well maybe, um, this certainly was not because I made any great decision other than that would be the, the values I saw were very high, and so yeah. I was in under the values. Yes. <laughs> well, let's, let's um, go yeah. 36, 32 in that case, which is bringing us down two at both ends, so it's not making yeah. a massive change for you to be concerned about. Because you can obviously tell when it's too low when you're riding, but yeah. when it's too high... Too high subjective. Um, yeah. The ride will become choppy. Um, the, you know, when you, as you, uh, if, you've been to, if you're in a corner and there's a ripple, the tire might bounce over and, and make a slip rather than... Right. Because it is your primary suspension. It is the part of the suspension. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, gosh, um, over tight tires wear quickly, right uncomfortably, but are tremendously stable. Gosh, okay. Let me just... Uh... Uh, this is the cap. These caps have, have got a secondary seal inside yes. them. Yes. And the Michelin ones are particularly good. So yes, I, I just bought those because I lost the one of the originals. Right. Um, I see a lot of people fit metal and other different yes. caps. I decided uh, to just get the plain plastics because yeah, I like them. But it's, and it's very, this very actually great. has a seal. Yep. So that's it's all gone all the way down. Yes. Sir. Yep. So there's quite a quite a, a um, thick rim. Yeah. Mm. There's a Ducati yeah. or Campagnolo? Ducati. Ducati. Yeah. Those no, are that's the FPS yeah. wheels. Yes. So now the the lightest part of the assembly will come to the top. Yeah. Can't do anything but do that. 
Yes, I've watched this a couple of times. And when I was doing the disc run out and all that, what I did is I took the axle, the actual real axle, yes. put it in my vise sticking out like that. Yep. And just put the wheel on it and just that's how I measure my run out and yep. everything. Which this is a run out so, device as well, so we would um, rather than being on these pivots we'd sort of demount it and use this right. as a gauge. Oh yeah. Um, but on this occasion we're after the freest running possible. So, so it actually has ball bearings there, doesn't it? Yeah, ball bearings, so it's not relying on the wheel bearings. Mm. And physics means that the highest part of that assembly is the lightest. Mm. So if we mark that, bring it to 45, yeah. it'll rise, 90 I should say, and come back to the top. So all I want to do is put some weight on here, that means that it neither falls nor rises. And in that situation it will be perfectly balanced. So we'll leave it more than that. Well, it had um, six times seven grams on the rear, and it had five times seven on the front. So we got more than that still. And in fact, I believe it was approximately there. It was it was about that far away from the valve. Right. Well, I think we're not even sure which side. But it was that far away from the Very valve. often, actually, it's the wheel that you're balancing, not the tire. Mm. And um, if we were a racing bike, I would have balanced the wheel assembly without the tyre. Okay. And that way, if you got in a rush situation, you'd be okay just to whack a tyre on right. without balancing because you'd be within... So it's got a big and a little weight. Yeah. That is microscopically out. You would never, you'd put a Grand Prix bike out on that and if you were it wouldn't find it. It's a definite movement though. Yeah. Oops. Now the point is when it, when you let it go, that should rise... Not at all. ...to the... It should but just... But you see, if one had it... Um, let me just say... If it's perfect, we should be able to set it anywhere and have it not rotate. If one had it not exactly on the spot, so let's just let that come to rest. Yeah, yes. If one had it either side, one would need more because it wouldn't be making up for the distance away from that point. Correct. Um, but that's that's the spot. That's top. Mm. Yeah, it's different. And we're really we're chasing such a fine amount. I think that. Um, if Valentino Rossi wouldn't right, see it. Tracks, have you done one of these like this and then put it on the machine? Um, e yes, and I, I, I always beat the machine. Okay. Yeah, it I'm not sure those are sealing. I might have to do something about it in the end. So do you think they come in different lengths, those, um, those tubes? The tubes we've taken out, I'll be interested to see when we compare. Yeah, yeah. Um, they look remarkably long to me. And, Genuinely, um, we have been far too thorough. I don't mind at all. <laughs> That's the whole point. Yeah. Right. So, are we packing up? Yeah, we're packing up. Right. So we'll make a couple of trips. Yeah. We'll take the, uh, I'll take one wheel and one. Here we are back again. Um, got the caps, everything, nothing else. All right, let's get out of here. All right, thanks for that help. No problem. Uh, the deal with the length of these things, these valves, this is a new one, was that the prior owner or whoever did the tires left this um, second nut off. Yes. That's, so that's, that it would stick out that's further. That's completely the that's correct, correct assembly. Yeah. 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 So we've opted to leave it on and we'll just deal with the uh, length possibly through some short um, caps.